Elden Ring's Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC is massive. It's got a lot of things in it. The DLC has five regions to explore with eight new weapon types, 10 Remembrance bosses, 20 Spirit Ashes, and 39 new Talismans to explore. But you know what the DLC has even more of than that? Elevators. This DLC has 41 elevators. You see, a year ago, I finally went insane and cataloged all the elevators with an Elden Ring because nobody else was brave enough to do it. And here I am, once again, rising to the task, documenting and ranking all of the elevators from the DLC. And what's better to do with that than to share my insanity with you all? Before we start ranking elevators, I want to get a certain subsect of elevators out of the way. These are elevators that share their texture and design with at least one elevator from the main game. If I have an example, I'll try to point it out, but most of them you'll probably just be able to tell. Because, of course, you've probably seen them before. First off, we have the Catacombs Elevators. These are found in a few locations. There are three in the Fog Rift Catacombs. There are four in the Dark Light Catacombs. And there are three more in the Scorpion River Catacombs. Yeah, these are nothing new. Uh, unfortunately, the most common elevator in the DLC is a reused base game elevator. I know it's upsetting. Honestly, I'm just kind of shocked that there are as many of these as there are and that they didn't do any sort of unique variation on them. For all of the elevators to be reused in the DLC, this one does make the most sense. And the only thing of note that I have to say about this one for the DLC is that these ones move considerably fast. Um, they do move faster than certain elevators in the main game. But a lot of the elevators, especially the Catacombs ones, do operate on different speeds, and I cannot be bothered to figure out if this one matches up to one of those speeds. If, if you want to find that out, good for you, but compared to most of the elevators in the main game, these do move very fast. At the end of the day, it's a Catacombs elevator, D tier. Our next reused elevator is the Viaduct Tower Elevator. And this one is just the standard lift elevator from the base game. There's nothing fancy going on here. It's just a wooden plank elevator with chains holding it up as the operating mechanism. There's a button that you depress down, and there's some metal banding that goes across the length of it. That's really it. This is the only time this elevator gets used in the DLC, which is... I, I guess that's interesting, because it was the most one of the most commons from the base game. So to see it only reused once is interesting. Nice job clocking in. I'm gonna go ahead and say D tier. Next up, we have the West Rampart Lift. This elevator is also found in the Castle Enos location. This elevator is just like the standard wooden lift elevator, except it has a little bit more metal cladding, kind of in these curved, almost flower-like decorations on it. Now, one interesting thing with the West Rampart Lift here that I really wanna point out, I don't know what it is about this elevator or if it's something with the lighting in the game, but this elevator is magic. When you first come across this uh, in the specimen room, you will see this elevator and it looks really dark like it almost has this shadowed black texture almost like a matte black kind of paint job on it or satin it's not shiny it's a very low luster kind of dark tint to the lift when you ride it and go down and when once you're in the next room once you're in the room that it leads to you can very clearly see that this is still just the recycled texture from the main game. I don't know why they look different in the two realms. I've put down stones and like your torch to light up the room to try to get a better look at it. And I swear it just changes. Somehow, somewhere in between this elevator, you, you hop off this one and get on another one. They look so different in their two in the two spots, but it's the same elevator. It's I think it's really cool, and for that fact alone, I'm gonna go ahead and put this specific elevator in B tier. No, just kidding. A tier. I like it a bit more than that. The other one can go fuck off in C tier, though. Next up, we have Rabat's Rise. And this is just a traditional Rise elevator. There's plenty of these scattered across the main game. This is the only one within the DLC. And fun fact that I learned making this video, the Rise elevators glow at night. I had a really hard time figuring out which ones glowed and which ones didn't because every time I'd go back and check, they changed on me. I didn't realize that was because it was the day and night cycle and they just glow at night. Um, if that's like really obvious information you guys knew, cool. I Somehow I totally overlooked that. But uh, yeah, there you go. It's an interesting elevator. You know, it obviously operates on some kind of magic. Just floats up and down. Other than that, it's the same rise elevator thing we had. I'm going to put it in C tier, if nothing else, but for the psychic damage I've been dealt. Okay, next we have the Shadow Keep Water Church Elevator. This kind of elevator is also found at the Shadow Keep Back Gate and the tree worship site, so there's three total. When I first made this list, I actually thought these were unique. 
but I was surprised to see that after going back, these share the same design as one found in Landel, the lift taking you up to the Gideon fight. Now again, there's maybe some lore you could infer from that. I think it's really cool that the Shadowkeep Dungeon and Landel are sharing this architecture. I think you really could interpret, you know, a, a connection between Merica and Mesmer in a way that shows the significance of these two like people in this place and how closely they're tied together. Or you could just interpret that they're reusing a texture. But as far as the design is concerned, it's cool. You know, it's got these detail elements of tree roots and interwoven engravings, and it's all based on the circular pattern. There are some standouts with this. These three elevators I don't think are equal. We'll say the back gate one is probably the most standard one. It's just the elevator reused again, you know, but that one's all right. I do particularly like the one in the church. That one, once it's fully depressed at its lowest state, you can see the water textures over the elevator. I don't know, it's a cool effect. I think it's really neat to kind of see the elevator a little bit underwater. And then also with the tree elevator, I think that one's really neat just because the walls look really dingy. I just, I think it's neat that it's kind of gross. For the three of them, let's say B tier. Next, we have the Shadowkeep Church Shortcut. This is another reused elevator, and funny enough, this is reused from the Halleck Tree Roots elevator. This elevator is really similar to the last one. It has a lot of the same, you know, stone engravings. Very, you can tell there's, there's a woven texture to how the stone has been engraved. I think it's very much giving off symbolism of roots here. Is there something to be said about the Shadowkeep using architecture from both Leyendel and the Halleck Tree? Perhaps. Does that change the fact that this is a reused elevator going into C tier? No. Next up, we have the Suppressing Tower Elevator. This one is also a reused elevator, but from somewhere I bet you might not guess. There's an enclosed elevator with similar engravings on the pattern to a rise elevator, but as you start rising, the tower begins to spin. And when it did this, I immediately knew what this was. This is a reused elevator from the Hero's Grave Sites in the main game. I think it's longer than the original elevators and it, I think it spins you a bit more. I know I was kind of making a little bit of a goof with the Shadow Keep elevators about the lore, but the Suppressing Tower elevator I do actually think has some lore implications behind it. The fact that this elevator is reusing one of the most unique elevators from the main game, being the Hero's Grave elevators, the fact that those elevators are so closely tied to death. This elevator is explicitly tied to death with the diet log on top of it, connecting it further, being like the focal point of death in this area. That's cool as hell. And all on top of this big spinny boy. I do unironically think there is a lore significance to this elevator being reused, which is an absurd sentence to say. It's like, even if it's something just as simple as the concept of death being shared between the two places, it's still really cool that they went as far as to reuse this elevator for that. I think that's super dope. Last up for reused elevators, we have the sewer coffin. I'm not even sure if I should even consider this elevator reused or not. I really don't know. It feels reused because it feels like it serves no purpose to be here in the game, but it's here, I guess. And honestly, it's only here on a technicality. I had to draw the line somewhere on elevators for this game, and this fits the description of an elevator more than Spirit Springs do with Torrent. So here it is. In the base game, they were cool and they would float you up, which was a lot of the reason why I considered them elevators is I think in theory they also go up, but you just ride this one down a sewer drain, which is kind of fucking sick. It's kind of whack, but it's kind of sick. Let's just say A tier and move on. <laughs> I like it. So now we have the Shadow Keep Specimen Storehouse side entrance. This elevator is really similar to some from the base game, being like the Forbidden Lands elevator and the Ornate Dragon Temple lift in Faramazula, but I do believe this one is unique. I can't find the patterns to match up exactly on any of them, but it's a circular version of the elevator lift found in the Hallet Tree. The design is more similar to that than the others. This one's really cool, but honestly, it's nothing special. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments about this one, but I do think this one is unique to the DLC. For some reason though, it does just give me base game vibes. And that's unfortunate. I'm sorry, C tier. Moving on. We have the Shadow Keep Entrance Elevator. This is just like the standard wooden lift with the metal ornaments, but like twice the size. It's all right, like nothing special, but just big. And big is okay. I do like that it's big. I'll say B tier. Next up, we have the Shadow Keep Specimen Storehouse main entrance. This is the same thing here as the last one, but it's an octagon. That's literally it. 
wooden elevator. It's got the ornamentations on it, but an octagon. I'll say A tier. I'll say A tier. I think it's neat. I think it's cool. Not doing anything too crazy. I like it. Now we have the specimen storehouse upper elevators. There's two of these. These are really cool elevators. They're found near the top of the storehouse. They're little octagon one person elevators that kind of give me bird cage vibes at times. They're operated with a decorated button and I think they're pretty cool, but nothing crazy. I'm gonna say A tier because I really like them. Similar to that elevator, we have the specimen elevator behind the castle. Similar to the upper elevators, this one is a one person wooden elevator operated with a button. But instead of being an octagon, this one is a square, and it's so much easier to walk off and die here. I don't know why, the other one doesn't have the back protected either, but this one I feel like is just so much easier to walk off and die. Because of that, I'm going to go ahead and say B tier. Would have been a little bit higher otherwise, um, I'm a little upset at it. Now we have the ancient ruins of Rawa? Ra? Rahua? I don't know. Fuck, man. These elevators are large square elevators with stone engravings surrounding the ruins in several locations, and they match the designs of the ruins that they're surrounded by. I believe these engravings are associated with the Crucible purely on vibes alone. They're neat and they're big, and that's all I could want most days. But in addition to that, there's these green textures within the engravings. I'm not sure if this is overgrowth of some kind or maybe a dye. I'm pretty sure it's overgrowth, but it looks really cool. I'm gonna go ahead and say A tier. I like it. I think it's dope. I really like the overgrowth design here on these elevators. I really do like it. Now we have what might have been the first elevator you found in the DLC. These are the Bellarat elevators. Uh, these are in four locations across the DLC. There's one uh, right after the Divine Beast, one in the Bellarat shortcut, the Inir Ilim shortcut later on in the game. And one for right now that I'm just gonna call the, the Euporia elevator, we'll get back to that. This elevator is a really similar design to the stone dungeon elevators from the main game. Locations like Leyendel, the Halic Tree, and Fermazula, they all get an elevator style like this that matches the aesthetic of the location. So of course, Bellarat also gets one uh, being tied in with the horn scent and the treatment, which is great to see. Uh, this elevator, it's similar to the others in that it's largely decorated with engravings. While it's based upon similar circular motifs and detailed engravings to others, this elevator actually stands out to me because of the colored tiles that are added to the design. They're also propelled by a curved shaft which matches the decor in the room and the surrounding columns. I think these ones are sick. I really do. I really like the tiles on them. The design's really cool. It really matches the rest of Bellarat really well. Uh, and in your limb later on, it kind of serves as like a really ornate transitional piece that connects the two worlds. So I really like it. I'm going to say A tier. I think these are really dope. We have the Bellarat jar elevators. So there are three of these total. They're in the, the two jar dungeons, the Bonnie Jail and the Bellarat Jail. There are three of these total to the DLC, and these elevators are sick. The dungeon gives a bit more lore to the jars in Elden Ring. And the dungeon at one point has an elevator system operated with a button to traverse with a jar held up by chains at three points. The jars are a bit larger than the player and are similar to every jar in the area. They're dark and dingy, sealed with the same wax-like cap we've seen before in the game. And it's really interesting to think of these elevators with the context of the rest of the dungeon. We know that these jars usually have people meet inside. But the idea that this jar probably has some contorted suffering soul inside while I use it to search for collectible cookbooks is pretty off-putting. This elevator is an easy S tier for me, and glad to put that one at the top of the list. We have what I'm going to call the Inir Ilum lifts. There's two big ones and one small one. Uh, these are the main lifts entering into Inir Ilum from Bellarat and before the big end fight. There's also another one that is very similar, but just smaller to the other lifts. And I'm including it because it has these similar chains to these that act as the lift mechanism. These are co really cool lifts. I like that they're expanded versions of the Bellarat ones, which helps tie the two places together. But I also really like the gilded chains used to hold them together. It looks like they spared no expense making these lifts for this location. Except they did overlook one thing. This is just a petty thing that I noticed while I was getting footage for these elevators. The chains just vanish into the ceiling. I know there's magic and shit in this game, but that's kind of that's kind of whack. Of course, the colored tiles make a return here, showing the connection to Bellarat below and the horn scent. Overall, this is a really great design, and I'm going to give it A tier. Ladies and gentlemen, 
we've made it. Here we are at our final elevator. Now, I would have been very happy to have just ended with the jar elevators. I think those are really neat, they're really cool. I like the way they tie into lore. I would have been happy just having that rocking out S tier. But we have one more that takes the cake, and I'd like to show you. If you start at this side of Grace and you turn around, you're gonna find a broken ring. There's a lot of blood stains here. A lot of people have died. Now, the parkour in Elden Ring is some of the most bullshitty bullshit to have ever bullshitted, and I hate it every time I see it. But this is obviously a clear sign of treasure to be found to the Elden Ring player. Now you may be thinking to yourself, why does a broken railing that leads to intense hardcore platforming on the side of a floating building, how does that mean treasure? It just does, don't question it. But there is treasure along this pathway. What, what treasure will you find? Maybe a smithing stone? Perhaps a, a tree fragment? Or maybe even a unique weapon? There is true treasure here. And what might that be? What I'm going to go ahead and call the Inir Elim Grand Elevator. This elevator, similar to the other Inir Elim elevators or the Bellarat elevator, is absolutely decked to the brim with engravings and tiles, and absolutely the best elevator in Elden Ring. You can see the tiles ornamenting around the side with the circular motifs continued here. There is also the immense golden chains we saw earlier on some of the other elevators right here acting as the hoist mechanism. This elevator is peak bougie. On top of all of that, this elevator is in a massive octagon shape. It's very cool. I might be biased towards shapes, but I love this elevator. You may be thinking to yourself at this point, hey guy, this elevator seems maybe marginally better than the rest of the elevators we've seen, or at least similar kinds at best. Why is this the best elevator? Sometimes it's not about just the elevator, and sometimes it's more about the story the elevator tells. You can look around this room and try to find some kind of story or lore here. You know, you could probably parse something out of it, maybe. But I like to look a little deeper. The story of this elevator is less about its design and more about its destination. Where this elevator takes you. Where you come from. And where you're going. Because it doesn't make any fucking sense. This elevator does not make sense as far as like how they would have built this as a building for its purpose. It only makes sense kind of if you think of it in game terms, but it doesn't even in that sense. So you have to go across this intense platforming section through some enemies that are some bullshit to get to treasure that's on both sides of this elevator. This elevator takes you up and places you in front of an enemy that you have to fight, which just takes you to another elevator down to the weapon. This elevator gives off the essence of, like, this meeting could have been an email in elevator form, and I love it for that. It doesn't need to be here. It could have been a staircase leading you up to this point. It could have just not existed at all, and the game would be no different. But someone made this elevator, and it's a unique elevator, too, that just leads you to another elevator that then brings you to the weapon. The weapon could have just been at the top. The idea that this pathway has its own unique elevator that just leads you to another elevator to get the weapon is insane to me. The absurdism of it all is what I love. And the fact that you cannot access this area at all to even begin with. You can't get to this elevator to begin with without platforming on the outside of a floating castle. That does not make sense. The elevator does not make sense. And yet it is here. This game has literal teleporters that could take you wherever. This civilization could have built teleporters that could have taken you anywhere. And they keep doing this shit with elevators. Keeps me up at night, man. It's crazy. And that's why I love it. S tier. I will take no questions. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Maybe learned something. Maybe lost some brain cells. I don't know. Uh, whatever YouTube's good for these days. But anyways... Thank you so much. I'll catch you later.